was Floyd Standifer, everyone. Give him a hand again, please. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Quan Nguyen. I am the Executive Director for the Vietnamese American Economic Development Association. And on behalf of all the merchants and all the residents of Little Saigon, I would like to welcome each and every single one of you. In Vietnamese, we say, Chào các quý vị. Welcome, honored guests. Um, We're very excited to be a part of this event today. Seattle is a great place to live because of its diversity. The Vietnamese community has been here for about 30 years, and in that time we've created about, uh, we created a very vibrant and thriving neighborhood. Well, there was a community before us that also had a very vibrant and thriving culture. And today we're here to celebrate and pay tribute to that community and to their achievements. And so without further ado, to get the show on the road, I would like to introduce the director for the Mayor's Office of Film and Music, James Keblis. Welcome everyone. Thank you very much for making time to come out here today. My name is James Keblis. I'm the director for the Mayor's Office of Film and Music. And uh, I had no idea when I was gonna, when I ordered a tent, it would be to provide shade. So it's very nice. We are here to celebrate the roots of jazz in Seattle and to begin a campaign of honoring Seattle's musical heritage and its bright future. But today's, a, today's dedication is also about the spirit of collaboration. And as you might imagine, there are a lot of people that had a lot of ideas about how to honor jazz in Seattle and in this neighborhood. And I'm happy to say that every one of these ideas that were brought to the table and to this project and to this day, it made it better and better. So if you'd bear with me for just a second, I'd like to thank a few of these individuals and organizations. First, I'd like to thank those who contributed time and money to make this event and this dedication possible. Ben London at the Pacific Northwest Chapter of the Recording Academy, Bob Centelli at Experience Music Project, John Gilbreth at Earshot Jazz, Quan Nguyen at the Vietnamese American Economic Development Association, and all the other community associations in Chinatown and the International District. Thank you very much for the round of applause for those folks. I don't see him in the audience, but I'd also like to uh, thank Nintron, the designer of the sign you're about to see in a second, who I'm sure now regrets agreeing to be a uh, volunteer to be a part of this thing. It's been a long process. And uh, Tam Nguyen from the Tamrin Tree uh, Restaurant for hosting the reception right after this dedication. And finally, my colleagues at the city's Office of Economic Development, Karen Zog Black for her help, uh, Jill Nishi, who uh, his last day was yesterday, but agreed to be here one, for one last city event, and Steve Johnson, who'll be holding down the four at OED while we get a new director. So give them a whole round of applause, too. I'm gonna let these guys wax poetic, so I'm just gonna say a couple logistical things. After this dedication, we are hosting a little reception just behind us at the Tamarin Tree Restaurant, and it's gonna have some wonderful music and some food and beverage. And if you're one of the lucky people that uh, were able to get tickets from my office for the reception, uh, the Seattle Legends of Jazz concert at the Triple Door, um, you can get those at a registration desk in the uh, Tamron Tree. So thank you all again for coming down. And now here's Paul DeBarros to take us back to 1940. Thanks, James. Is that the one I need? Yes, sir. Well, this is a great great day and it's one I've been looking forward to many, many, many years ever since I started researching the history of jazz in Seattle in the late 80s. To see all the great musicians who transformed this corner into a great cultural hub, to see the men and women honored by our community who did that and by City Hall gives me great pride and great pleasure. This is the neighborhood, after all, where a blind 17-year-old piano player from Florida named Ray Robinson took the time to demonstrate to an ambitious young Garfield High School student named Quincy Jones how to translate what he was hearing into his head into written jazz arrangements. You know the result. It's also where down the street at the 411 Club, a young Ernestine Anderson started singing her heart out at the breakfast set and discovered there wasn't anything else in the world she'd rather do. You know the result of that, too. 
It's where Jimmy Rolls came over from Spokane to go to the University of Washington, or at least that's what his father thought he was doing here. But he wound up kitty corner from where we are at the Black and Tan, transfixed by a saxophone solo by Aaron Davis. And then he came under the spell of the neighborhood's master piano professor, Palmer Johnson. It's where a decade before, Johnson himself studied under the tutelage of Seattle's first jazz patriarch, Oscar Holden and where Oscar actually hired Jelly Roll Morton, the great piano player and composer from New Orleans, to play in his band over there at the Entertainers Club. All this happened right here. Can you imagine it? Musicians walking up and down the street, instrument cases in their hands, raising a high five, limousines dropping off fancy ladies in diamonds and furs at the Black Elks Club. Never sleep, standing over on the corner selling his papers at four in the morning. Ah, there's some people out there who remember him. It was like Mardi Gras, said Al Touré, the great guitar player who played down at the Ebony. Back when this was all happening, though, the only people who knew about it were the folks in the neighborhood, the musicians playing in the clubs, and a few adventurous souls who could see that something real and exciting and valuable was happening here. Because according to the newspapers and the powers that be, this wasn't a cultural center. This was a honky-tonk neighborhood full of gamblers, prostitutes, violence, drugs, alcohol, a place where Horace Caton, son of the great newspaper editor of the same name, said, we were not even allowed to ride through there in our carriage, for those people were morally corrupt. We can see now that a veil of race and class prevented folks from seeing clearly just what was going on down here. And it didn't help that City Hall did everything it possibly could to make sure that none of this music happened at all. Recall, for example, that Councilwoman and later Mayor Bertha Landis, bless her heart, passed the first of what would be many anti-dance ordinances in Seattle in 1923. And that in 1956, Mayor Clinton had his picture taken in front of the 908 Club holding an axe, vowing to shut every one of these clubs down before they corrupted the morals of one more young person. As we stand here today, it's easy to laugh about such things. But it's important for us to realize that what's happening this afternoon is very, very unusual in Seattle cultural history. Because in spite of our amazing musical accomplishments, we have not really been very friendly toward our music culture. And the veils that stood between us back then and what was happening in our culture still are very much with us, and they often cloud our vision as to what is really valuable as opposed to what is merely superficial. That's why I'm happy and proud to be standing here today and to say that this administration, this mayor, is the first one to ever come out positively vigorously and vocally to support Se Seattle music. And I salute the musicians today who made Jackson Street was what it was, but I also salute you, Mr. Mayor, and your representative in the Office of Film and Music, James Keblis, because this sign we're going to look at, that we're going to unveil today, not only single signals a recognition of what happened in the past, but a promise of what will happen in the future. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, thank you. What a beautiful day. What a great day to gather here in Seattle to talk about our city and its history and its future. I had a chance early this morning to go on a walking tour of Columbia City, one of our great neighborhoods, and then go out to Lake City and open up a new civic center and library in that great city and welcome thousands of people to their brand new library. And here we are today at 12th and Jackson, in the heart of our city to talk a little bit about the history that we don't know. The younger generation in our city doesn't know the history of this area and some of the wonderful things that have happened. As Paul said, in the past we've had uh, sort of a uh, love-hate relationship with this wonderful, rich uh, tapestry that we call our cultural history. The diversity of this city is something that we look around and we can see and feel and touch and it's one of the strengths of our city but we don't go back very far and, and think about where it came from and, and how it brought us to where we are today. 
When I became mayor, we had an ordinance on the books called the Teen Dance Ordinance that said that young people weren't allowed to enjoy some of the great music that takes place in our city. And they couldn't dance uh, if there were older people present in that venue. And we got rid of that ordinance. We have a city that has... <laughs> that has a recent history of innovation. And we understand that. We know about Nirvana and Pearl Jam and Kenny G and others who uh, put us on the map in different kinds and different types of music. And some of us understand it, and a few of us wonder about some of that. But we should celebrate it, because it's part of the diversity of this city. And we're in a, a place here on Jackson Street where uh, 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago, there were 40, 45, 50 clubs along here where you could come and enjoy live music and dance and uh, celebrate some of the great artists of the 20th century. Uh, Floyd Standifer, uh, who gave us that wonderful uh, serenade to uh, open up our program today. Uh, Ray Charles uh, got his start, a professional start, here in Seattle. Quincy Jones has gone on to have such a huge impact uh, on the music and, and uh, entertainment and film of this country. Uh, and Ernestine Anderson, our great uh, and uh, wonderful pa uh, matriarch. This city has a rich and valued history in the arts. Our cultural life is important to us, and today we're going to make sure that the younger people in our community have a chance to appreciate not only the breadth of our city, which we see here today, but the depth, how we got where we are today so we know where we're going. Thank you. Now I'm going to uh, ask uh, Dr. James Gore. And I'm going to ask uh, John Galbraith if they would join me up here. And I get to do one of the fun uh, powers that come with the office. You don't talk about this in campaigns much. But uh, I get to declare and proclaim pretty much anything I want uh, as long as I'm in this office. And that's great. And so it is my great pleasure today to uh, declare October 22nd to 29th, 2005, to be Jazz Week in Seattle. And I encourage every citizen of Seattle to join me in celebrating our jazz scene's jubilant history, thriving present, and promising future. Thank you. Hello, I'm James Gore, and I'm the uh, president of the Langston Hughes Performing Arts Center uh, Advisory Council. And since we've already had a little bit of recollection about the past, I'm going to talk about what we're doing at Langston Hughes to help our youth towards the future. We have named a program after Jackson Street. It's actually called the Jackson Street Music Program, which will, was initiated last year and will uh, actually get its first start uh, in classes and working with kids on cultural and social and all sorts of endeavors in regards to helping them uh, to move forward. We're using music as a metaphor. It's a perfect metaphor. It has so many elements of diversity, uh, individual creativity, improvisation, things that you teach that you're going to, life skills that you're going to need all of your life. And you can find them in music. Matter of fact, I have a quote from Herbie Hancock. And he said, music is not really about music at all. Music is an expression of life. And that's what we want to take with the Jackson Street Music Program, honor the history of Jackson Street, and have those kids learn about different elements in life. I want to thank the mayor and James for uh, establishing Jazz Week. And, and please, if you have kids, please get in touch with Langston Hughes Performing Arts Center so we can make this program uh, as, as enduring and as, as, as exciting and uh, as the past of, of, of Jackson Street. I thank you very much and I'd like to introduce Mr. Bob Santos. Hi, I'm just uh, here to say a few your words. I used to run these streets. Um, uh, and and I, wa I want to acknowledge one of those kids in those early days. Tuck Ng is over here somewhere. Tuck is right here. And he's with the China 
gate project. They're trying to build a gate here on, on, on King Street. And he was uh, hanging out at that time, too. But I lived in the NP Hotel on 6th Avenue with my dad. And uh, I'd visit my aunt, who was on 14th and Spruce. So I'd come up Jackson Street, up north on 12th, and, yes, and then go down on Yester two or three times a day. So I got to experience the jazz and the scene and, and the action. And I was a little kid, so, you know, these, some of these um, you know, musicians, you know, they, they, they started to see me all the time, and they didn't know whether I was F FBI or CIA or what, <laughs> even as a little kid. But um, I remember the Black Elks Club and the Ebony down on 6th and Jackson and, and, the, and the Black and Tan. And I used to sit on the porch at the old rocking chair at, yeah, at Yesler, 14th and Yesler, and hear, listen to the music coming out of there, and go down to the Palomar and, and listen to Ernestine Anderson. But not only black musicians, we also had, uh, after the war, we had a Japanese, um, a, a band uh, 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 directed by Tomi Tarao, uh, the Moonlighters that played for all the dances for the a Asian kids in the community. Uh, I remember being a teenager and we had a dance at the Buddhist temple and we hired a band, uh, 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 the Bumps Blackwell Band. And the first trumpet there was Quincy Jones, you know, and if I'd have known it then, I would have been really been nice to him, you know? <laughs> so, and, and later on, um, uh, uh, in the 50s, I'd come up here and Bob summarized, you know Bob, he had the radio show. Bob had his record store up here, so I bought all his records, and I'd go to the to the uh, Civic Auditorium to to do the jazz at the fill. That was that was every year. That was my life. And then in the '60s, my partners Ben Ligo and and Ed, and Ed Ligo, who owned the Door Downtown, another jazz club, uh, we we decided to be entrepreneurs, and we brought Dave Brubeck to town. Uh, at the Aqua Theater for three days. Went bankrupt, but it was fun. <laughs> and one of the young people, we, we had this barbecue uh, restaurant on Dearborn, and one of the folks that I used to feed because he was starving was a kid named Teddy Ross, probably the greatest singer uh, uh, on the same light as, as Sammy Davis, Davis Jr. And I, and I fed Teddy, and, and, and he got on, and we never we lost track of him. And one day we saw him on TV. He was accepting a Tony Award for uh, he was the lion in the Wiz, and then we gave him a start. We kept him alive. Uh, welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> now for the part we're all been waiting for. We're going to have Bob over here on the left, and Mr. Mayor, if you could go on the right, and we're going to pull down the sign. If you guys. Wanted to bring the cameras over here. Now would be the time to do it. You can't see it, but it's good. Remind everybody that there's a reception taking place at the Tamarind Tree. Feel free to come on up. Thank you for coming. You want to do one pose? you get it. Thank you. 
sorry.